All right, it's South by Southwest 2014 as we wrap up things here at On Air Streaming. Finally getting some Texans in the house. Born Jamestown raised, Revival. It's about damn time. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank I kind of feel this is a bit self-indulgent. I feel a little bit of a kindred spirit here because you guys are from Magnolia, Texas, which is real. Look it up. Absolutely is real. It almost sounds like a Hollywood town, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but when I was probably in junior high, my family bought a car dealership in Tomball, yeah. which is right down the road from you guys. And bitter it, rivals. Big rivals. <laughs> I know. We Big football to, towns, right? Yeah. We try to steal their women and avoid their police. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah. you know, to me at that time, I'm a little older than you guys, but it felt like a ghost town to me. But obviously, I think listening to you guys perform and the way you do music, maybe something special came out of that experience, yeah? It, it did. I think, uh, I think growing up in a small town, it, it, was, I don't know, it was a very close-knit place. Uh, and, and Zach and I bonded pretty early on. It was just... Uh, I don't know. It was a natural thing, never really a conscious thing, but it was like anything I was doing, he was doing, anything he was doing, I was doing, and it was just we were always together. And uh, you, you just, you know, you get a childhood best friend, you grow up hanging out, and it's just. I think I think Magnolia was a good place to to kindle something like that because it was a. Um, it was a tight knit community. Yeah, far enough out to where. You had to keep yourself entertained sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were the entertainment wherever you are, yeah, right? Uh, sometimes. Do you guys yeah. remember the first time you talked or the first time you talked about music? I remember the maybe the first time we talked. Uh, yeah. It was in, was it trigonometry? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I think it was geometry class. Geometry. Uh, yeah. I did terrible at either, probably. Yeah. Uh, we Zach moved in from Lubbock. Yeah, I'm, we moved from Lubbock, and I was 14 or 15 years old. And I remember before I even went to school, I told my parents, like, where the hell did y'all move us? Like, where, <laughs> what is this? I don't want to raise goats. <laughs> and that's coming from a guy from Lubbock. Yeah, I came from Lubbock, and I thought Magnolia sucked. So, uh, um, Cotton to goats. Obviously, um, it worked out well. But, uh, yeah, first we had my first class I was ever – went into um he was in and it was uh it was like something out of a movie it was like uh what's that fast Ferris times Bueller. at Richmond high yeah i mean kids ran the classroom she had no control and there was like wedgies <laughs> and um paper, paper airplanes, airplanes. Yeah. Uh, i wish i could make this up but it was crazy and i was like oh man my education is gonna be great well and, the, <laughs> and this was uh this was probably third period or so, and when our town was small enough to where when a new kid came, it was a big deal. You didn't get a whole lot of new kids. And not only that, but all the girls were swooning over this new kid, Zach. So I was like, I had two periods sitting there to be like, who is this asshole? And <laughs> then by the time third period rolled around, we ended up I think having I a class. the same shirt every day. <laughs> yeah. I remember that shirt. I remember that shirt. Yeah. 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 Uh, but then we... Uh, I, I met him and I was like, all right, he's not bad. So yeah. we, we became pretty quick, fast yeah, friends. We got and, over our differences. Yeah, two heads are better than one. Yeah. All right, then I'm very curious. You know, your, your, your music's very rootsy, soulful, definitely got a touch of the South. And even though I'd argue Texas is more of the West at times, you guys pack up and go to L.A., which is, seems odd to me. Why, why'd you do that and what came from that? It was odd. Um, a number of different factors. I think we knew some people who were, we, we were playing, John had been playing music here as a solo artist for a number of years. We went to school down the road at Texas State. We were pretty familiar with Austin. You were living here. Mm -hmm. um, I had just moved up to Austin. Um, and we knew people that were moving to Nashville, and that kind of seemed to be the hot spot. And uh, we were like, well, then why the hell would we follow everybody else to Nashville? And we knew we wanted to change the scenery. Um, something to kind of shock the system and, and be uncomfortable for a minute. So L.A. seemed like we had just played a – we had gone out there to play a show and hated it, um, been really uncomfortable there. It so was we were the like, worst hey, we experience. There. It was yeah. the worst experience ever. We had maybe five people come out to see us, and they, they were halfway paying attention. And, uh, yeah. 
and it just gave us a, a bad vibe. But to be completely honest, we had some dear, dear friends that paved yeah. the way and went out there. And so I think that gave us a little bit of courage to maybe, you know, at least if we went out there, we weren't going out there completely alone. And that helps. And so we, we went out there really just for the experience. It was that simple, just to, to see what came out of it. And what did kind of come was our entire album. It, it's really pretty autobiographical from start to finish. Talking about, you know, we wrote our, the first song we wrote two weeks before we left Texas called Heavy Heart, and it's talking about, you know, I should have known this, this, you know, I'm gonna miss this place, and I should have known I had a good thing, and I didn't have to leave it to realize that it was good. We were still here, and we knew it was good, but we knew where we were going. It was that anticipation of leaving, and then, you know, getting to California, the unknown, um, the adjustment, the the feeling of just being lost. Uh, yeah, being really uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then just feeling like a fish out of water, and. After we kind of settled in, getting a little comfortable and 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 kind of being like, all right, I'll I can take you on Los Angeles. I think I know? spent a month just eyeballing people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at you in your LA clothes. So it was <laughs> no it was morals. A, it was a very definitive chapter in our lives. It was always meant to be a temporary thing. We never moved out there with the intent of staying there forever. And it was a very definitive, clear-cut chapter in our lives, and that was that was our album. And now. You know, we're looking forward to, uh, to to chapter two, which is writing our next album, coming back, um, you know, with everything we've learned and, and mixing that with everything that's, you know, coming yeah. up. And Yeah, so many good things came out of it. We met um, the other three guys who in the band um, who are all extremely talented musicians. So um, it, I'd say it worked out all right. It was Thus a good far, move, yeah. yeah. It was a very positive thing. On a very light note, watching a bunch of video clips, photos, do you guys really smoke a lot of crazy-looking pipes? <laughs> I don't know. Or was that just for I, a photo Maybe shoot? every time the <laughs> tape's rolling, we have a pipe in our hand. I don't know why. We have some pretty intense pipe collections. <laughs> okay, I yeah, I, I enjoy smoking pipe. It's actually a pass. I love it, but... Um, some of the crazy ones. I'm sure we, people we, look and they're like, "What the? Uh, these guys like, like these are poster children for lung cancer." <laughs> like, uh, we look at these two tugboats. We, we, sons of <laughs> so we we got we really got into to pipe smoking and then we decided to take it a little step further. We carved our own pipes <laughs> and uh, so some of the really maybe ugly ones. That's the ones you've seen, the wild ones. Here, here's what happens: uh, is we find a hobby. Um, and then John will get really into it, and I have no choice but to find that hobby because he's doing it all the time. I'm like, well, okay, well, I'll learn how to carve a pipe with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll learn how to weld with you. I'll yeah, metal work. Whatever. I get, uh, I get off on some tangents, but Zach is is really good at, uh, he's really good at going with it and diving in. There, there isn't much. Zach is that kid that. Uh, there's a kid in him that will not turn down a dare, and 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 uh, he, he won't. He won't. Even that, a double dog dare. No, true. that part of him will never uh, go anywhere. And, and I lose the peer pressure every time. And every time. On the same side of that coin is a part of Zach that uh, I I kind of I'm an optimist, and I'll come in with some harebrained ideas. I'll be like, man, we should. This is this is what we should do. And he'll kind of look at me with a crooked eye. And be like, all right, let's do it. So that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, I guess it's a, it's a type of courage. I don't even know what you'd call it, but, but that works well with us because I think it's that same side of you that won't turn down a dare that just says, yeah. all right, I'll do it. Yeah, um, yeah it's going to be the death of me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it might but be. I'm having fun with it. Yeah, it might well, be. Well, uh, probably unbeknownst to Zach, I... Talk to Jonathan about you guys doing something special for everyone out here. You up for it? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah, L little little treat, another yeah, tune for everybody here, South by Southwest, longer. 2014. Hey,
Yeah. 